Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. The Atheist Experience is live August the 3rd, I believe. Yes. yes, 2003. I'm your host, Martin Wagner, Ashley Perry, and my co-host as always. Afternoon. And Karen Glasser's back to join us on the show again. Uh, Hi. So very happy to have you. You just popped up I at the studio, and we were just like, well, we can't Ten minutes more airtime. I want to be again. Can't miss this opportunity, so here you are. Right. Anyway, this show is sponsored by Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. at Hot Jumbo Bagels, with the exception of the first Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series and a guest speaker at the Mayor Room of the Austin History Center located at 9th and Guadalupe. Now, today was the first Sunday of the month. I unfortunately missed the speaker, and it's a shame because this is a guy I really wanted to see, uh, Klaus Linza. Um, who is a, he's a professor at UT, is that right? Uh, yeah. You saw it. Right? Yes, he's uh-huh. actually Michelle's boss. I don't know exactly what ah, well, he nice. does specifically, but he works in the college, yes. Mm-hmm. Spoke about uh, life extension life technology. Extension, yes. Which, Very interesting. Okay. So, uh, it was a lot of talk about genetics, uh, how our bodies work, are we programmed to get old and die, or is it just, does it just break down over time, or is it, mm-hmm. are there actually biological things that are set in motion that causes you to age and die? So um, what was the answer? And how can we overcome that? Well, basically, we're not going to live forever. Well, gathered uh, that, but I mean, is there something <laughs> that can be done at least to uh, extend the, is yeah. there a genetic component? The biggest message you walked away from with a, with a lecture was just what everyone already knows, but no I one else to exercise. admit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Eat better. <laughs> exercise more yeah. and live a heck of a lot longer. That's, yeah. That's, so, everybody well, knows that nobody wants to admit it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Everyone wants this sort of magic of. Uh, exactly. Everybody wants life pill. If, I just, if I just eat red steak for three weeks straight, I can lose the weight. <laughs> so, or something like that. So. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I know. Take, everything takes work, people, including, like, not dying. So, all right. <laughs> Uh, other fun stuff that uh, those wacky atheists are involved in over at ACA would be Godless Gamers, which is Monday night at the home of her brother and her sister-in-law, and Happy Hour, which is a Thursday evening event uh, at Antonio's Tex-Mex, which is near the intersection of Highway 183 and I-35. That starts about 7.30ish, but people trickle in all evening. Look for the table that has the little Darwin fish sign, and that should work. Uh, the Nonprofits is our bi-weekly internet radio show hosted by Jeff D and and <laughs> Steve what are you doing in there we just you just saw every single title that we have on the <laughs> uh, a little discombobulated today folks um, the uh, that just utterly threw my concentration off <laughs> what was I talking about the nonprofits that's Got what I was talking about yeah yeah I was up to nonprofits okay. and there they are we found that title and, uh, well, that would have been yesterday, which is the uh, most recent episode. Forgot to, I forgot to update that. But um, that is at 2 in the afternoons on Saturdays, every other Saturday, at the atheistnetwork.com website. We had 20 or... people in the chat room yesterday. Really? So that's I think unusual. it was a record. Yeah. That's, that's unusual. That's the largest they've had, I think, yeah. since yeah. That's like season. two or three times as much so, as they usually have. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. that's great. Uh, the, uh, well, the, the show is really hitting its stride again after they were on hiatus for about six months. And came back. And uh, but if you don't want to go to the atheistnetwork.com website to uh, get the audio stream, you don't have to. Uh, Russell has put up a link directly to the feed on our website on the radio show page, so you can just do it that way too. But if you want to participate in the chat room, that is at atheistnetwork.com. And uh, past episodes of the show you can hear on our website on the radio show page. He's got MP3 streams <clears throat> of um, you know the last half dozen or so. But that, so the next episode will be, I guess, two Saturdays hence, like weekend yes. after next. Yes. And they'll just, they're just going to keep Don't with that. Offhand. <clears throat> they're just going to keep up with that, uh, you know, pattern because um, they seem to like that. But that's all kinds of fun. Nonprofits, two thirty in the two in the two? two 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 in the afternoon every other Saturday. Okay, University Atheists and Agnostics is a registered UT student organization. Uh, started up by our very own Charles Tabany. They're getting ready to begin their third semester coming up this fall. This is the first really successful uh, university uh, registered UT student group uh, for atheists and agnostics. So if you are a UT student and faculty member, uh, there is uh, the email address right there at the bottom of your screen, uaa at mail.utexas.edu, if you want some information on uh, their meetings and joining up and being part. 
uh, Charles will get back to you. As soon as we know when the fall semester begins and where the meeting room is and what time, um, we'll let you know. In the past, it's been like Friday afternoons, but that could yeah. always change. So, OK. I pretty much think that does it for announcements. Um, <laughs> And so this is just going to be a really run and gun loose goose show today. Um, I'm I'm just in a very mellow mood, and uh, just in the mood to talk and have some fun. So I guess that covers it. So let's go right to news, and you can tell us what's happening on planet Earth. Okay. That we should be interested in. All right. Uh, first one here: the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith is a Vatican publishing group, apparently, uh -huh. and they have published a new little pamphlet. Um, that states that Catholics have a duty to oppose the introduction and operation of legislation recognizing same-sex unions. It identifies politicians of having, of having a duty to vote against any such moves. According to the document, Catholic, teachi Catholic teaching states that while homosexuals should be treated with respect, compassion, and sensitivity, homosexuality was objectively disor disordered. Uh, those who had moved from tolerance to le legitimization of specific rights for cohabiting sexual, uh, homosexual persons need to re need to be reminded that the approval of legislation of evil is something <laughs> far different from the toleration of evil. So this is what's interesting, right? They say, "Oh, these people should be treated with compassion, yes, and love and respect, even though they're evil." Yes, and they will burn <laughs> okay. for all eternity in hell. All right, general rule of thumb. Okay, if you want to treat somebody with compassion and respect, you don't start that process just by calling them evil. Yeah. Okay, that's usually not the good stepping stone towards, yeah. you know, how you express yeah. respect and tolerance for someone and <laughs> compassion. And you know, now, that's usually not the first thing you say. Well, you're evil, but yeah. yes, we're and going to. Course. Well, I think you're evil, but I respect you for that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I it's kind of good, cool, personally. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. Well, maybe they're just maybe this is their new way of being open-minded about stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. but um, it also claims that allowing children to be adopted by same-sex unions would mean doing violence to these children. This would place them in an environment that is not conducive to their full human development. And do they explain how this isn't I conducive would say to their full human development? Probably not. Just that you know, well, it's gay. It's it's evil. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Now, well, I, now the, the funny thing about all of this, you know, the, this is this is interesting, right? Because remind me again who it was over the last two or three years has had the big scandal with you know molesting yeah. and doing exactly. like physical harm to children. Exactly. You know who was it? These same people yes. who are now saying, "Oh, you yeah. know, you this is dangerous to children to put them in these gay homes." Exactly. Well, know? it's dangerous to take them out of the gay home to put them in a church. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even more dangerous. Yeah. But uh, but anyway. The side story that goes along with this, that was actually the side story in the story. Mm -hmm. The story is the Irish Council for Civil Liberties has warned that the language of the 12-page booklets is so strong it could be interpreted as uh, it could face prosecution. Anyone who distributes this booklet mm -hmm. could be prosecuted uh, under incitement to hatred legislation. So essentially, <laughs> it's hate speech. It's exactly, yeah. exactly. They're saying that this is yeah. full out hate speech. Well, you know, calling someone evil is for, yeah. for it. So, yeah, and saying that someone is evil, and if they have children, that's doing violence to the children, mm -hmm. and uh, they there's can't no evidence of that. fully as humans, and all this kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. just completely wacko. Yeah. Um, and so they're basically saying that this is this yeah. pretty close qualifies as hate speech. Yeah. So, watch yourself. You know, before the show, we were talking a bit about this this film that's out now called The Magdalene Sisters, mm -hmm. uh, which is this exp it, it's a it's a fictional account, but it's of a real uh, real event or real I guess based on real actual events that took place, which is that in Ireland, uh, I think right up until is it the sixties or the eighties, very recently. They had these uh, like homes for wayward girls, right? Which were essentially they were like yeah. these laundries and a place. There were these sweatshops, right, where women who were you know in the church who were like young women who were like evil sinners because they they like either had abortions or they had sex out of wedlock or what have you. They were essentially kidnapped and incarcerated and in, in these wow. these uh, in, incredibly harsh working environments where they were routinely, you know, flogged within an inch of their lives. Yeah. And it was just this completely horrible, you know, uh, thing that uh, that victimized, you know, just scores of young yeah. women. 
for years and years and years. And what's interesting is there's a film now that's out about this. Uh, that's just again, it's based on a fictional story, but it's a film that's based on these real institutions. And of course, the Catholic Church here in America is is up in arms about this. And uh, he's saying, "Oh well, this is 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 you know anti-Catholic, of course, which is the yeah. first thing they say." Um, and one the thing that I thought was really interesting was that one of the Catholic spokesmen that I saw interviewed on the news about this movie, and of course he was just condemning it <laughs> across the board. Was he was referring to he was calling it revisionist. And I'm and and it's like you know why are TV interviewers so lame that they don't call people on these things when they say them. Because, like, is this guy trying to claim, if he's saying it's revisionist, what part of the movie is revisionist? Is he trying to claim that these little, these Magdalene laundries didn't exist? Because that seems to be the stance that the church is taking on these institutions. It's like, let's pretend they didn't happen, and if we don't talk about them, people will forget about them and that they were never there. Because, um, was it true that uh, they, it, was, it was very difficult to find um, an actual clergyman in Ireland? Uh, a member of the Catholic clergy to be interviewed about these places. Um, I think the director of the film like only managed to f- find one or two, um, and don't have all the info there. But still, it's like, how is it revisionist just because it's pointing yeah. to something in your church that you don't want exposed? It's crazy. So that's a that's a common way that people react to anything, though. Mm-hmm. When they when they have something in their history that they don't approve of, they they just deny it. I mean, people deny the Holocaust. People mm-hmm. deny. Yeah. Slavery. People deny a lot of stuff like, just just because they don't want yeah. to be associated with that. And it's easier than facing the reality of it and admitting, yeah, this was this bad thing yeah. that happened. We and screwed up, up to it. Yeah. Oops. Won't <laughs> yeah. happen again. So, so. Um, well, yeah. So more and more and more controversy about the whole the whole gay marriage thing. Yeah. I guess, which is which, and and it's happening because it's gaining steam. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's. You know, several provinces in Canada now have legalized gay marriage, and that's yeah. expected to be nationwide in Canada. I think by the end of the year. Yeah. Uh-huh. And again, and I. That's great. Yeah. And again, I don't understand the. Um, you know, I, I understand people. You know, certain people not. You know, objecting. I guess on personal grounds to the idea of gay sex, but I can see there's you know, many things that I would object to on personal go- personal grounds that people do that I don't yeah. approve of. But I'm not out there trying to deny them. Basic human rights on the basis of that, you know. It seems like the only real argument against <laughs> anything to do with gay being either gay sex or gay mm-hmm. marriage or anything like that is, as company point out, just the ick factor. That's all there is to yeah. it. I don't understand it. It's different from what I do. The, therefore, it's wrong. But, you know, I think uh, there's a certain level of, uh, I'd almost say, education going around uh, in the public media now that I think is really, really excellent. Yeah. It started with the TV show Queer as Folk, which was kind of opposite sex in the mm-hmm. city, only with gay people. And now they've got these new reality shows coming out. Um, they've got uh, one called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, which is yeah, a, yeah. just a bunch of gay guys that go into men's houses and, you know, give their house and, and their physique and everything a total makeover. They teach them manners and they teach them how to cook. And now they've got a new one we have no on. idea how to do that. You know. Right. <laughs> so. Of course not. And now they've got a new one coming on called Boy Meets Boy, which is yeah. like a reality yeah. dating show only with gay guys. But, but see, now the problem, though, with, with this flurry of new gay like media programming is that it is there, there's actually now a backlash to that. It's, I think it's a little too much too soon. Because I think now recent, added, recent polls now are showing that there's, there's a slipping away of tolerance now towards, towards homosexuality as a result of, hmm. I think people are feeling bummed. Yeah, we had, we just suddenly had this flurry of new, yeah. like television shows and mm-hmm. everything, and it's just like, it's, it's still too much for a lot of folks to yeah. take. Yeah. You know, I, I, my view on the shows is if you don't want to watch them, don't watch them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, and I think I mean, it's great because I mean, to a certain point, to a certain extent, I think mm-hmm. in terms of the ick factor, having all these shows, even even Will and Grace, I mean, having all these shows on TV mm-hmm. that portray a gay person as one of the main characters might just help with a certain level of desensitization. Yeah, well, yeah. but again, if you do too much too soon, it can it can backfire, yeah, and backfire that seems to be happening happening to a slight degree right now. Um, you know, so. I don't know. Like I say, if it's if there's just things in the world that you don't want to be part of, don't be part. You know, and especially in the media. I mean, if no one watches television shows, if they get bad ratings, then yeah. no matter how good the reviews are, the shows will go off the air. But I think that in, you know, the gay America is enough of a niche market, I think, to sustain its own shows. Yeah. And so, why shouldn't they have their shows? I think so you know, too. Their shows. Well, I mean, there's, these... there's five 24-hour-a-day Christian networks on digital cable. Yeah. Why yeah. shouldn't you have a programming for? 
yeah. you know, the gay and lesbian community. And maybe that's part of why these public, I mean, these politicians are suddenly starting to get all freaked out about it, is because they're mm-hmm. starting to recognize that people are accepting it more, mm-hmm. that it's less, that that it's that it's more common now and it's more yeah. acceptable. And, and they're feeling threatened for some reason. And they, you know, we have an arch conservative administration right now, and so um, and you know, there's nothing like exploiting people's. Fears and, you know, They're like, uh, wait a second, wait a second. We've been trying to teach people all this time that mm-hmm. there's this ick factor involved, and and now they're mm-hmm. not listening to us anymore. We have to reinforce the ick factor because mm-hmm. they're they're not listening to us anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yes, the president didn't lie; he exaggerated <laughs> that kind of stuff. Okay. Anyway, uh, more news then. Okay. All right. Uh, sticking with the Catholics, they're yeah. just so much fun. Well, um, in Louisville. A mm-hmm. judge Friday approved $25.7 million settlement from the Roman Catholic Archdiocese to 243 victims of sexual abuse by its priests and employees. So this is just still going on everywhere. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep, this is just more legislation. Mm-hmm. Uh, more cases are coming out against them. Uh, Jefferson County Jefferson County Circuit Judge mm-hmm. James Shake also granted fees and, and fees contracted by William McMurray, the lead negotiator of the settlement of the settlement talks with 214 plaintiffs. Uh, the fees are 40%. Uh, Sheikh ordered a preliminary award of $6.8 million to be paid from the Archdiocese Settlement Fund within 10 days. So oh. $6.8 million pretty much immediately. Does that clean them out? I mean, I can't. I, I don't it, think that would. It doesn't say anything about that. Uh, the church yeah. actually kind of says that, you know, this is, it's, it's good that this has happened and, you know, we can now move on. Uh, you know, essentially saying that it's over. Well, um, so well, it'll never be over for the people who are still traumatized. Exactly, and, and they're saying that from this, essentially, now they can move on to just you know yeah. healing the people and the church. Well, so yeah. I mean, it's it's a real problem for them. So you know, there's there's a the, the the worst violation of trust that you could possibly have. Yeah, has occurred, and um, yeah. you know, I mean, I could understand, um, you know, if the, the spectacle of Catholics just jumping, you know, the yeah. the, the sinking ship. Yeah, as quickly as they can get overboard. I mean, yeah. it would just, uh, yeah. and uh, you know, and it it wouldn't even be a thing of them losing their belief system or their faith. It would just be their allegiance to this yeah, institution just, of this church yeah, that has betrayed to question them. This specific, yeah, church type organization. Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, more nasty stuff was kind of, has come out recently. I think in the last few weeks about Shanley. Now it's revealed that he was you know really? paying to have boys brought to him or he was when the boys were coming to him he would pay them off he would buy their silence basically wow he'd basically you know have boys brought to him in the diocese and he'd do his thing right and then he would like give him a st- give him money yes. to to be be quiet about it and i mean that's just that not money he's... is coming from the church which is which george george bush is trying to put our taxes into yeah well right. <laughs> it wasn't happening at that point uh-huh. instead it was people who were going to the church putting in the collection plate that's where their money went. Yeah. So. Well, it's just, but the all of these um, the suits and all these legal actions and, the, and, and what's going on in the courts is going to ultimately trickle down, right? I mean, you know, the prosecutions and everything. Oh yeah. Uh, that, you know, that's all on the, the you know the public trough in many ways. So. Yeah. yeah. Just well, very. There just was there. something in here uh, saying that what is it? Uh, the judge ordered that the archdiocese and the Franciscan order mm-hmm. can no longer be liable in the class action lawsuit. Mm-hmm. So they have essentially it, they found yeah. they've settled. They cut a deal for twenty five million dollars. Yeah. No more cases. Yeah, they cut a deal. They're like, we'll do this payoff, and yeah. you will stop any yeah. free future. Yeah. So now, I, 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 see the of, to do. I see the yeah. horror, look of horror and disgust <laughs> on your face. Now, what I am wondering, and I don't have details here, is I'm wondering if this is a very specific. That's well, probably that. The church, it's, it's that diocese, probably. rather than the entire so, Catholic Church. Is because now. they oh, yeah, yeah, they'd be that, so yeah. because they've agreed to pay this certain amount of money. Now they can do it forever and never be tried for it again. Well, I think for the, case, the pending for these suits, cases, the, all the, the pending suits yeah. and the pending actions against them. Yeah. It, this this kind of yeah, you know, this kind of deal making goes on all the time in the courts, right? I mean, whether it's a you know like a. Any sort of criminal case, it's, you know, copping a plea or, or just cutting a deal. Yeah. We're like, all right, you know, it's, instead of you suing us for like half a billion dollars and giving us, you know, with 500 lawsuits all at once, why don't we agree on a lump sum payout and then and the cease future? I mean, that's, that's, that's very mm-hmm. commonly done. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, if starting, you know, like in 2004, there's this whole new uh, crop of, you know, molesting priest, you know, incidents. 
then that's that. Those are new uh, crimes. Okay. Good. Um, so yeah, it's not like it is, they're not really buying their their uh, you know immunity. immunity from prosecution in perpetuity. No. Um, I don't yeah. think any any DA exactly. worth... any any future cases would be perfectly no uh, perfectly good. No, any any DA who would allow that ought to be just tarred and feathered. You know, just <laughs> it's just that they wouldn't uh, let that happen. But uh, yeah. Anyway, hmm. you have a lot of. Time but yeah, I think that idea. that's just for that's just for uh, Lou- well, this diocese. Louisville. Yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, was George or the Archdiocese yeah. in the Franciscan Order? Well, DAs um, want to keep their jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and you keep so. your job when you're a DA by prosecuting bad guys. Yeah. You know, going after them. You know. Yeah. That's true. Uh, all right, more. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go ahead and let the calls sure, rack up uh, before Ashley gets to the next uh, caller. Just to go ahead and, and uh, if you're already on the line, uh, we'll get to you in just a second. Thanks for calling. If you've never called our show before, though, uh, just be, be sure to check out our website, atheistivingcommunity.org. All kinds of worthwhile information about us, including a fact page, Frequently Asked Questions. This is a compendium of uh, common questions that we have gotten after being on the air for five years and talking to uh, Christians and other believers, um, as answering questions. The most common questions are on the fact page. Uh, but if this is your first time calling, this is a live call-in show, so uh, feel free to uh, phone us up at 477-2288 and... Tell us what's on your mind. So, Ashley, over to you again, okay. please. Now we're going to go away from the Christians and the, well, the Catholics specifically, yeah. the... and focus on Alabama. <laughs> um, uh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, we've had fun with Roy Moore over there. Is, this, is he so. doing more stuff? Uh, there was a story about him, but I don't think it was really anything all that spectacular. Nothing new. He's uh, still... Yeah, it's just yeah. The, they had, had an order... Uh, Passed down saying that the monument has to be down in 15 days. So the the Ten Commandments monument, the, the appellate album. court. Yes, and he and he's basically said, you know, bite me. Yeah, and now and he's saying he's going to take it to the Supremes. Yes. So is there a stay? But but does he still have to get that thing down in 15 days, or the has he managed the, to get a stay on that rule? I haven't heard of any stays yet. Okay. And so apparently, as far as I know, it's got to come down in 15 days. Right. We have a resident legal expert around here somewhere. Maybe we'll find so, out if uh, yeah. you know what's going right. on with that. But this has nothing to do with that. Oh, so more fun. Um, okay. Yep, more fun from Alabama. Uh, in Montgomery, Alabama's new governor is trying to persuade voters to approve the biggest tax increase in state history by telling them it's their Christian duty. <laughs> and to for, pay more to render under Caesar, is that <laughs> exactly? <laughs> yeah. And apparently, what they're trying to do, it kind of sounds like, is um, they want to lower taxes to some of the lower brackets. But apparently, increase it exponentially to the higher brackets. It's about time. Now, suck the rich thing. Then, basically, yeah, yeah. Let's and, let's okay. milk them. Um, now, according to our Christian ethics, we're supposed to love God, love each other, and help take care of the poor. He said, "It is immoral to charge somebody making five thousand dollars in income tax." Basically, they were trying to raise yeah. the level. You have, I think, right now they said it. You, if you are okay. a family of four right. making seven, making forty six hundred dollars, then yeah. you have to pay income taxes, state income tax. And I totally and agree that you shouldn't. That. And so, yeah, I mean, a family yeah. of four making forty six hundred is not very much money. No, a family of so. four making forty six hundred so. is that's you know, you're lucky to eat yeah. you know, Twinkies and crackers. Forty six hundred yeah. a month or forty six hundred a year. A year. A year. That's like Ouch. well below the poverty. Yeah, there are yeah. people living that far below the poverty line. Nice. It's so. it's inconceivable. So, um, wow. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, okay. Apart from the whole Christian duty angle of it, I I'm in agreement with the guy so far. Yeah. The only thing I wonder is how he can possibly go out and say something like this. I mean, he's simply shooting himself in the foot on every single level. Well, and now, so and so, well, is, is, the, is this the, a Republican uh, legislator? Uh, who's, who's I, I would through? I, I, uh, yes, yes, yes. Republican governor, really? uh, yeah. Rob Riley. So wow. he, he is now, kind of deviating from the party line. On... Yeah, I mean, you see, the strange thing about this is <clears throat> usually it's the Democrats who say, let's increase taxes. Yes. Now... You could almost get Democrats to support this a little bit more because, say, it's going to the poor. It's going to help them out, stuff like mm-hmm. that. But since it's your Christian duty, it's like, well, most of them don't really go along with that line so much. So that kind of, you know, loses a little bit of their support. But it's still a good idea, and that doesn't necessarily but mean they're, they're going to say, because you're telling us that God well, is this is coming from Christianity, we're not mm-hmm. going to do it. Of course. Yeah. But it still loses some of the support, saying, you know, some kind of wacko fundamentalism. Well, here's saying, the, the, way it would lose its, the, the way it would lose its support but would be if it you pisses had... off everybody. Well, if, if you had... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not just that. It's not just the spectacle of a legislator. Again, you, you know, re, re, you know, referring to his Christian beliefs rather yeah. than the letter of the law yeah. in order to determine what the law should be. Yeah. But um, 
Well, you're going to alienate all of the hardline right-wing uh, yeah. fundamentalist Republicans yeah. who don't interpret Christian duty <laughs> to, you know, and you increase taxes. Yeah, and, so. and, and who like to throw around phrases like welfare state and liberals yeah. and stuff like that. Like, they're, is, they're the worst epithets they can come up with, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, so I assume that it's going to be his own party who, you know, yeah. and people who are like into the whole prosperity gospel thing, yeah, yeah. Uh, who are going to be the most vociferously against this guy doing what he's doing. It's not going to be liberals and Democrats. I mean, I think his point is that that's the population he's trying to target because the Democrats already agree with that. The poor people already agree with that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the general overall Christian population probably kind of agrees with that. But it's the Republican people who are generally conservative and are probably generally Christian Mm -hmm. who who have been kind of ignoring that. He's trying to, I don't know, remind them that, that, you know. Uh, Well, I think you're right on that. He is trying to sell them the idea. I just don't think they're going to buy. Yeah. I just don't. I think they're going to they're going to take offense at, you know, at his particular some. It's what about somebody? Somebody in his party is going to say, whoa, wait a minute. (laughs) <laughs> You're trying to say it's our Christian duty to have a big welfare state and soak the rich on taxes and blah, blah, blah. I don't think so. And then they get that whole rhetoric, you know, the wheels of rhetoric start rolling on that end of it. And, and It'll this be guy's... interesting to see if it works, though. I mean, I've always been the one to yeah. say, you know, okay, well, I don't. I don't practice religion and I don't believe in God because it doesn't work for me. But mm-hmm. if it actually serves a function for other people, then props mm-hmm. to them. You know, if it actually makes you feel better about what happens after yeah. you die, or about you know how figuring out all the questions you can't answer, like how the universe was created, then you know, good for you. I think you should celebrate that. Now, if we can actually get Christianity to work in our favor for having it actually support you know the morals that we think are good morals, mm-hmm. then let's back them up on this. Well, I, I would back them up on it, but I, I wouldn't use the you know the, the, the Christian rationale for it though. Yeah. But I think yeah. yeah, I can understand. I mean, he's he's trying to speak to them in in, in their language, yeah. in a way to get them to accept what is essentially a progressive idea. Yeah. Trying to get it to get to a non-progressive party and and trying to use their rhetoric to sell them on a progressive idea, which is interesting. Like I said, uh, we'll we'll see if he's called on it by some of his people. Well, but, they'll decide on it on September 9th. Yeah. In a statewide poll of 500 registered voters, uh, mm-hmm. 49% said they would vote against it. 39, 4, and 12 were undecided. Hmm. Yeah, so, so he's got to get those people on the fence. Yeah, he's he's got some work ahead of him, yeah. that's for sure. Well, he's got at least 20, 12% there to sell the idea to. Yeah, to work with. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's who you concentrate on in politics with the undecided. Yeah. Huh, okay. One more, and let's try to hit the phones. Okay, and this will be a relatively quick one and relatively timely since we're talking about textbooks and everything. Um, This is a state representative, Ken Bradstreet. Which state do we know? uh, Which state, which state, which states? I am not seeing anything about that in here. Okay. I'm sure it's listed, but I don't know. Uh, Intelligent design, the theory that... This again. Yeah. 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 Um, the theory that life on Earth is the result of a creator's plan is science, not religion. Says so this says, guy. So who says does. this guy. Yeah, and it's the same. I don't think we need to go into too much detail about yeah. it. The same, the same people make, trying to make the same arguments. Exactly, trying to put and, legislation in there saying that if you're going to teach evolution, you have mm-hmm. to teach creation. And let me get. And let me get. He's or intelligent. He's making the claim that evolution is flawed, but he's not explaining how. Of course. And uh, he's saying that uh, he's saying that there's all sorts of scientific evidence supporting. Intelligent design, but he's not saying what it is. Exactly, and it's this just you know, and it's uh, rhetoric again. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah they're, they're, just trying to push it, creationism yeah. as actual science yeah. when it's. Now, Chronicle clearly printed not. my letter issue before last, and oh, did they? Um, yeah, okay. and, and it's interesting. The most recent issue because the, the, sta- the textbook the textbook hearings here in the state were uh, uh, happened about a month or so ago, and um, then uh, the. Uh, uh, someone from the uh, State Board of Education who was in support of the whole ID thing wrote in to the Chronicle. And um, very, and very defensively and very, very aggressive in terms – and tried to, you know, uh, accuse the writer of the original article of, you know, saying things that he didn't say in the article and, and, and stuff like that. And, and the and Chronicle doesn't usually respond to letters from the editor, but the original article writer did in this case because the person was making so many representations in their letter. Um, in an attempt to attack him for this article that was originally that originally appeared in the Chronicle like three issues ago, where he just exposed the the whole dishonest dealings and the agenda of you know what the ID crowd is really up to, which is this is a way to shoehorn religion into school curriculums under the guise of science, right? Yeah. And um, 
and he, he just he, he just blew the door wide open on that. And yeah. uh, of course, they don't like when that is is brought up. Yeah. Um, but it's it's. Uh, they do make a good point in the story, though. Uh, what? Who does? Eugene Scott. Oh, okay. Executive director of the National Science for Education for Sci- mm-hmm. National Center for Science Education. Uh, said it's not for legislators to say what should be taught in science classroom. Mm-hmm. If a scientific idea has merit, it will be judged by so by scientists and trickled down to the high school curriculum. Mm-hmm. To mandate intelligent design before it is accepted by the scientific community is wrong-headed and bad for science education. Yeah. I mean, if intelligent design were scientifically valid, it would have peer-reviewed it, papers be being published. Now. Yeah, you know, and so, it would have it would have solid support in the actual scientific community, and you exactly. don't see that coming from the scientific community. Yeah. There are like two or three guys. Yeah, there there's a fringe out there, but well, there are people like Dembski so. and Behe. Yeah. Okay, but all the, all of these guys, it's interesting. In the you know, both I think Dembski is um, oh, I don't want to mis misidentify him. I, I want to say he's a mathematician. I'm not sure. Yes, Dembski's very well educated guy. He's got several PhDs. Michael Behe is a biochemist. Yeah. Or no, I'm sorry, he's a molecular biologist. Molecular, yeah. Um, but um, and, and both of these guys have published peer-reviewed papers in their fields. Yeah. But what is revealing is that all of their intelligent design writings, they didn't go that route. They went directly yeah. to the popular press. Exactly. Uh, to the public. Because they get their um, support otherwise. Yeah. And um, so that's that has cast you know some some doubts on you know just the the, the integrity of their motives. Um, yeah. And but of course all of the books that they have written on this subject have just been you know, have a whole slew of critics among their colleagues. In their yeah. field, saying, "Okay, look, here's why, uh, you know, your ideas, are interesting ideas, but here's why they don't apply here, or here's why they're off base for this yeah. reason." Tick, 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 yeah. and they go, they go through it. Yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, so, all right, so just more of each, it's more, just more cases of people who don't know what they're talking about, criticizing a field of science they don't know anything about. Yep. And, and speaking uh, of burning textbooks, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you have something? For, uh, uh, oh, yes. Yeah. I don't. I think let's not go there today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that is that the news then? That's, that's, that's the, the news. news. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get to. Um, I appreciate notes from the crew, but I can't read it. Um, we're going to go ahead and get to our callers here in just a second, but we'll just encourage you all to line them up, uh, 477-2288. And we're going to get to our first caller right now, who has been holding very patiently for several minutes. And then uh, after we speak to him, I'm going to talk a little bit about some old business, and I'm going to put up the viewer email address, too, because that's always worthwhile. Hey, you're on the air. Hey, how y'all doing? We're good. Uh, Mark Johnson, right? Uh, Mark Johnson. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I've read that in the Chronicle. Oh, uh, he speaks out. No, that's a different guy. Uh, oh, actually, okay. I don't know him. Huh? I don't, I don't know Mark. Jo- Does anyone know this? You read movie? it, though, right? I've read the I've read the letter. Yeah, but I don't know Mark Johnson. Pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, my uh, letter was a in couple a couple of questions. Uh, my first one is I've always uh, I've been told that I was a humanist. Mm-hmm. I want to know what the difference is between an atheist, a humanist, and a not agnostic or. A, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, what's well, the other one? Uh, Evolutionist or whatever. You know, there's all kinds of different. Into one or yeah. Is... Yeah. Well, here's the thing: the term the term atheist specifically refers to gods and not believing in them. So right. there's like the a humanist humanism is a philosophy that has to do with like human rights, human dignity, uh, belief in equality for all people, what have you. And it's and it's it's rooted in sort of a sense of naturalism. But you don't have to be an atheist to be a humanist. You can be a Christian and be a humanist. I've Right. I've, I, I mean, personally, and I've, I've heard other people do this too. I've heard mm-hmm. people, re- I, and I've, I referred to myself as a secular humanist when I was talking to someone mm-hmm. who I, who I knew would be very offended if I referred to my, if I told them that I was an atheist. I've used yeah. it kind of as a PC term yeah. to yeah. edge, you yeah. know. Because I, you know, I go about life just about like, uh, let's focus on, uh, what's going on around us and yeah. what, what people are doing other than, Focusing on something that may or may not be there. I mean, right, that's yeah. the words that I live by, and that's what I tell people that want to bring religion up with me. Yeah. And uh, they're, well, you're a humanist, you know. Yeah, like, well, well, and, and you should go, the words. Yeah, cool. The word, the <laughs> words. I'm like, okay, I was just wondering. Yeah, yeah I mean, human. They focus on different, the, wor- the words focus on different things. Atheist means no belief in any gods. A secular humanist means that you don't think there are any gods and our morals come from people. Right. We sit around and think of, you know, what works and what doesn't, and there we go. Hmm. You can be a theistic humanist and say, there are gods, we just don't get our morals from them. I think the Greeks um, were very much like that. They believed in all the, all the different gods. 
but they realized that those gods were kind of flawed. Yeah, their gods um, were patterned after people. I mean, their gods got drunk and exactly the gods got and, yeah. drunk and had big old parties, and so we yeah, don't get our got, morals. Got, came down to earth and got human women and arguments pregnant. and petty challenges. Exactly, got human so, women pregnant and then made their goddess wives jealous, yeah. and then so our morals goddess, don't yeah. come from those gods, well, according to them. Sure. Um, yeah. And so they uh, were they were humanists, but they still believed in God. Yeah. So so there there could be any number of things. Now agnosticism is is a whole different. Um, it's a horse of a different color. Also, it's um, ag- agnosticism refers well agnosticism, which is the opposite. Gnosticism and agnosticism are terms that refer to like knowledge and what you think it's possible to prove or not prove. Whereas uh, atheism and theism are terms that refer to belief in God. So it's different. There's like one is, you could be agnostic and say, well, I can't prove that there's a God, but at the same time, you could be a theist and say, but I think there is one. I believe in one. I believe in God, but I admit I can't prove it. So you'd, so a person like that would be agnostic, but they would, they, but they wouldn't necessarily be an atheist. They'd be a theist. So, right. so there's all kinds of different, you know, gray areas and levels to it, and, and some people don't understand the differences, and they kind of lump them all together into one thing, but they're not. Yeah, that's basically why I was calling. Uh, yeah. my, my my next question was, uh, you, uh, I noticed on your show, I watched it a few times, this is my first time calling, but uh, mm-hmm. I, I noticed that you tend to uh, uh, focus more on the Christians mm-hmm. when, uh, you know, but I... But yeah. then I'm thinking, you know, it's probably because we live over here in the West. That's exactly it. Exactly. Yeah, so if y'all were living, like, over there, you'd be focusing on Muslims and... Or shot. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, yeah if we were over there trying to do this show, we, you know, we wouldn't... <laughs> That's just my whole point. Like, yeah. My, my whole point about yeah. people is, like, look... No, we, we've criti- we, we've yeah. certainly, I mean, let to, you know, the, the Muslim extremists, ha- we were attacking the Taliban long before 9-11 happened, I guess, right. for their human rights mm-hmm. violations. Every once in a while, somebody will call us up and they'll ask us something about, you know, something that's not particularly religious, like psychic powers or space aliens, and we'll give, you know, skeptical points of view about that, too. But, most, yeah, mostly the reason we talk about Christians more than anything else is just because that's what is in the majority in America. This, psychologically, it, it tends to mess people up, and, it, and I think we're getting a nice, you know... Uh, view of that with the Muslim religion and mm-hmm. and and the history of every religion, we're getting a, a nice mm-hmm. uh, view of how it, it emotionally messes people up and psychologically, mm-hmm. and, and they start dwelling on uh, killing other people instead of like focusing on what's going on around them instead of like yeah. you know something that may or may not be there. And, well, yeah, you know, you don't tend to get in humanism this uh, the concepts like infidels. And right. heathens, right? I mean, you don't tend to you don't tend to get fed these yeah. ideas that there are if if someone doesn't believe in the same things you believe, then that makes them somehow subhuman and right. not worthy of the same sort of respect and and tr- good treatment. Yeah, you're, uh, you're actually you're, you're working for something else. Yeah. That, a lot of folks, no, a lot of folks get a lot of goods and you know have wonderfully happy, productive lives being religious. But it's true that you, in any group like that, you're going to get extremists, and the extremists are the guys who make the trouble. True. Yeah. Fred Phelps. Yeah, <laughs> you mention you, you can mention yeah. any number of names. All right, it was nice talking to you guys. Well, thanks for the call, Rob, and okay. call back anytime. All right, it's a good kind and just a reminder to uh, you know unbelievers out there in the peanut gallery that uh, you know of our bagel shop meetings. Uh, if you are an atheist or an unbeliever, or agnostic, secular humanist, whatever you want to call yourself to not upset your friends, uh, you know, um, check out the website and check us out if you like. Okay, on to some old business. Uh, while we're letting more callers call up, four seven seven two two eight eight. Uh, two things. I'm going to start. I'll start with the Gibson thing, and then I'll work up to the letters. And yeah, because yeah, segue because we've already been talking about uh, the Catholicism. Some mm. another big movie yeah. that has uh, a lot of people get, getting their knickers in a twist is um, <laughs> the Passion. Yes. Uh, this um, film that Mel Gibson has made uh, with his own money, uh, which by all accounts is the single most graphic and intense uh, depiction of the crucifixion just ever put to film. Um, yeah, and there's there's already been a trailer posted to the internet, and, and you know the trailer itself is you know gory and just in, very intense, and it, it is you know I mean he's given it the full Braveheart treatment, and it, just dramatically speaking, it looks like it could just be a spectacular movie. That's fine, but he's he has um, this has already been out that he has uh, been hit with the, he's been targeted with charges of possible anti-Semitism. Yeah, uh, and. This started originally, or seems to have started, when a, an early draft of the script leaked. You know, got got to you know, went, someone in his office uh, leaked it to uh, the Anti Defamation League, you know, a, a Jewish organization, 
And um, there they read it and, and saw that this script, you know, and their opinion was reinforcing this whole notion of the Jews as the greedy, money-grubbing Christ killers. And, um, and Gibson also himself is known personally for being this guy who is a, a fundamentalist Catholic. In fact, he has, he's personally bankrolled a church in L.A. that is a Catholic church called a, um, it, where they practice what's called traditionalist Catholicism. And uh, these people essentially reject uh, everything after 1965 when they had the Second Vatican Council, Vatican II, where the Vatican said, all right, you know, Jews are fine, and you guys didn't kill Jesus, and, and there's all sorts of other reforms that the Vatican made to try to bring themselves into step with the modern world, as it were. Mm. Uh, well, Gibson and the rest of the traditionalists just flatly reject all of that. And they're, they're very much an old school Wow. Uh, in terms of uh, very, very doctrinaire, right? Mm -hmm. And he's known for this. And um, and his uh, Gibson's father, like who's this eighty-five-year-old coot who seems to be <laughs> losing a few. Um, he's he has made um, statements of a, a Holocaust revisionist nature, and wow. um, so so there's a lot of nervousness here, just because it's already known what Gibson's affiliation is per his personal religious beliefs. Uh, and now, but and so, but what Gibson is doing, and this is what's interesting, is to respond to the criticism, is that he seems to just be fanning the flames of it even more and even worse. Because what he is doing is he is handpicking these Protestant fundamentalist Christians to show the movie to. Yeah. You know, like people like you know, focus on the family, and people like Rush Limbaugh and Cal Thomas and all of these well-known right wingers, yeah. um, and screening the movie for them, and they're all coming out, you know, just singing the praises of this film, and they're like, "This is the best thing ever," and, and no, it's not anti-Semitic. But he, and he's showing it to like a few. This this is what's interesting is 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 he is in a news article I read. He said he's he's screening it for a, like a few Jews who believe that Christ was the Messiah. Oh. <laughs> but he, he just, just for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, and he's right. But he's, not really. but he's not, he just won't screen it for the Anti-Defamation League. And it seems like, why? If you want to cut all this criticism yeah. out, it'll take two hours. I mean, if, he's, if he is not, if the movie is not anti-Semitic, like yeah. he claims it is, then what, and the, uh, his handler, his people, who work for his production company, are saying, and their response is, well, we're not showing it for them because they've already come out in the media and attacked us, and we're, so we're not going to. And I'm like, well, that's even more reason. That's exactly. more reason, all the more reason to just come out, show these folks the movie. If you can get your harshest critics out there to say, we were wrong, the movie's great, it's not anti-Semitic yeah. at all, then that's really what, that's the best way to deflect the criticism. Yeah. But he's not trying to deflect the criticism that way. He's just trying to show it to, you know, a bunch of cherry-picked Republicans. <laughs> And say, oh, oh, it's wonderful, and I have tears in my eyes, and there's nothing anti Semitic. Well, you know, <laughs> a fundamentalist Christian who believes that all Jews are going to hell is probably not somebody who is in, you know, even if they're not overtly anti Semitic in their, yeah. their, their lives and in, in, in their actions, there is still that belief, right? If you're, if you're a fundamentalist Protestant Christian or even a fundamentalist Catholic, you know, only Christians get to go through the pearly gates and no one else, yeah. including Jews, gets to go. Yeah. So he's really, he's making it tough on himself, but, uh, this could all be just part of a big pre-release publicity campaign, too, yeah. to generate the controversy. Okay. After all, it worked for Last Temptation of Christ. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To generate a, a big flurry of, oh, this is so horrible. Yeah. That, you know, this Everybody is... Everybody wants to see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that's the, that's the whole... Uh, and now you're helping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's in the news, and it's worth talking about. Um, you know, I'm, it, it could, I'm, I'm, sure it's a, I'm sure it's a good movie. I mean, it probably is. I mean, yeah. Mel Gibson doesn't, you know, when he's... It's, it's one of those movies that, that I, I, movies, but. I, I think it would be good to see maybe rented mm -hmm. on video or something like that, but mm -hmm. it's not the kind of thing where you get together with a few friends and have, you know, have fun watching it, because it's in well, Aramaic, isn't it? Yeah. Aramaic. The entire thing is in Aramaic. Aramaic and Latin. Latin. It's in Latin. And so it's got it's, subtitles. And so it's well, the kind of movie where you have to have sit like there and read the yeah. entire movie. Well, actually, you know, his original plan was to release it with no subtitles. <laughs> I mean, just Aramaic and Latin really? and no subtitles. You know, the whole idea being that what's going on, you can just follow it with yeah. the images. And, yeah. Sure. Um, so you don't want to have an atheist movie screening of this? I'd like to go. I, yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to do it. I mean, I, uh, I mean, I was interested in seeing it from the minute I heard he was making it, just to see it. Yeah. Um, see what he would be doing with it. But... Um, I uh, read an article by Frank Rich, who is a columnist and a, a critic. He's in, in uh, International Herald Tribune. And it, it seems that even before the Anti-Defamation League started coming out and saying, oh, we, we have concerns about this film, it seems that Gibson and some of his people were already being interviewed by the media saying, 
Now, Jews are going to hate this, and are you know this is this could cause controversy. So it could be something that was sort of machinated in advance. You know, it's like saying, and in Frank Richard's whole thesis was it, it appears that what Mel, Mel Gibson might be trying to do here is you know trying to you know court attention for the film by by saying you know okay the Hollywood elite. You know the the liberal Hollywood elite, most of whom are Jews, right? Okay, <laughs> yes, they're that's they're, true. they're out there trying to crucify Gibson, as it were. And so this could be part of an elaborate pre-release game. This whole controversy surrounding the Passion could have been put into motion by Mel Gibson and his people themselves. But that's just a theory. But it it uh, it would certainly account for. Well, okay, it, it could either be a publicity stunt, or maybe uh -huh. it's just Mel Gibson saying. You know, I'm anti-Semitic and I'm proud of it, and I don't yeah. care who knows it. I want y'all. I mean, to Ellen, well, Ellen came out. Yeah. Why can't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but he's, you know, of course, he's categorically he's denied that. I don't think I don't think he's anti-Semitic, but I, I don't think he thinks he's anti-Semitic. But I, but if he is one of these traditionalist Catholics, then he, and he rejects Vatican II, kind of goes with rejects, the territory. Then the, yeah, it's, he's just got some memes at work that are yeah. just you know in, in charge of him and not vice versa. Yeah. So. Yeah, right. uh -huh. but we'll see. It's supposed the movie's supposed to come out Ash Wednesday of next year, <laughs> and so um, we'll see. And it will probably end up actually, uh, you know, being you know a minor hit as opposed to yeah. just a little obscure art movie, yeah. which it would have been without all of this. So yeah. because at that point there will just be so much curiosity. So I, sometimes bad publicity can hurt a movie in advance. All right, like this like this Ben Affleck thing that's out now, but. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, you know, I mean, you get the first hundred people to go see it. They all come out saying, "My God, that thing sucks." Yeah, <laughs> nobody else goes to see so, it. So, but we'll see. All right. Anyway, uh, Tony is online once, so we'll see what he has to say. Hey, you're on the air. Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, uh, I really don't know a, a whole lot about religion or the Bible to debate nobody, you know. Mm -hmm. But just because a person well educated, you know, when you meet them, I don't think they should think they're much better than a person that's really not as knowledgeable. And you know, I feel like. Here in Austin, that's that's more churches than school. And why there's so many churches? Why can't the churches come together on so many issues to to make people really believe that they are real, instead of uh, sending so many different uh, mixed signals? You know, uh, it, it's like they don't even work together. You know, I'm, I'm talking about just here in Austin. Churches don't even work together on a lot of issues. They can't even come together and try to you know go out in the community and start making a difference. To make people believe that they are really there for the people mm -hmm. instead of they are just for trying to gain as much as they can mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. sometimes you go to the church and you want help mm -hmm. you know they want you to fill out all kind of form they want to know what church you go to if you're a member of their church and they may give you a 10 hour check and send you on your way you know so really they, you know they send a mixed signal like they really not real and it kind of upsets me when yeah. a person who claims that they're christian really not what they say they are you know they send too many different messages yeah. You know, if they gonna if they say they they I'm, I'm like I said I don't know enough to debate, but if they say they this person, then they need to try to live that life. But so many of them not living that. You know, yeah. they doing it on Sunday, but the rest of the days they they evil or doing whatever they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so I not just really you know believe that they are real. Yeah. You know, it's really so hard you know to believe that. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, but uh, and I just don't see a lot of churches really making a big difference, making a big impact. You know, in 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 in, 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 in America, making a big impact because there's so many churches. I mean, tons and thousands of them, and really, they're really not making a big difference. They want people to believe that they are right and someone else is wrong. You know, and that, that's unfair. You well, know? you know, well, you know how it works. It's it's like any other big business. You're going to get a few churches that just end up by virtue of how well financed they are, how many members they are, uh, how well they are connected to certain politicians. And those churches are, you know, and just like certain, like in the business world, one corporation is just going to shoot up higher than the others just because it's better than the competition. You say have this, you'll see the same thing in these churches. The, the, there are churches that do have quite a lot of influence out there, but they are, they're like the most powerful corporation among, you know, the sea of corporations out there. They're the ones who manage to be uh, be better in the competitive market, and and they either have better money behind them, they have more influential people in the community as members. They might even have politicians uh, that uh, that they that they court and that they're in tight with, you know, in politics. So, it's. But you're right. What you end up getting is those those specific institutions or those specific churches, or you'll just get even just a few 
specific preachers, specific evangelists, right? Those end up, those individuals end up being the powerful guys. But then you'll have all these different, like you said, so many different churches with other points of view, but they can't come together, A, because they're not as powerful, and they have wildly different ideas, but they can't come together on them. So. You see, that's, that's what makes it real hard for people to really believe. I mean, mm-hmm. you, have to, you have to think about this. It's really hard to really believe mm-hmm. when you don't see the churches can't even do it. You know, they're trying to lure you there, but mm-hmm. they cannot prove to you that they are real, you know? Yeah. I mean, and, you know, but they don't mean just because the person don't go. They don't mean they're bad. Other people have to make them out to be bad people, you know? Yeah. I just think that's unfair. You know, mm-hmm. person, what church you go to? Well, what? Oh, it's there in my business. You know, don't have, you know, you don't have to go to no church to, to you know, to yeah. prove that you what they want you to be. And see, what happens is a lot of a lot of people that do go there, they want you to live the life that they want you to live. Yeah, and if right. you have to live their life, you might be unhappy trying to live their life to fulfill what they want you to do. Right. And that's not what we're here to do for to live for them. You know. Right. So you know, but you know, like I said, I, 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 you know, as long as they happen, do whatever they want to do. I don't think nobody should be influenced by you know the church because I really, to me. Just don't see it in the church. You know, right. that, that People should think for them. themselves. Yeah, it's right. it's part of the American quick fix that we like so much. If you go to church every week, you're inoculated for the next week against going to hell, and then next Sunday you get a booster shot. Yeah, and then, and then, okay the one, then they're just you know there's so. the uh, there's the Christmas and Easter only churchgoers. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 But uh, but you, you make a lot of good points, uh, Tony. We yeah appreciate your oh, yeah. input. Yeah, I uh, appreciate it again. I'll let you go. But just like I said again, until yeah. I can see it. Yeah. Build some unity which I don't foresee. Yeah. You know, they got to make me a believer. Make me a believer doing yeah. something. Got to show you the proof. That's and they, right. They, yeah. they can't do that. They haven't done that in all these years. They haven't done that together. They can't go c- come together with each other. Yeah. But let's try to go out in the community and bring the people mm-hmm. there. So, you know, I just think a lot of them just fake. You know, yeah. but thanks a lot. Hey, hey, we appreciate your, uh, your uh, opinion too, man. Yeah. Thanks for calling. Yeah, and nice. they got other churches out there that handle poisonous snakes and drink poison. <laughs> hey, if you need convincing, you know, somehow, maybe somehow, they've got it. And somehow those aren't the, the biggest churches out there. Yeah, like, yeah but you can see small. that when you go yeah. to the Renaissance Festival, too. You don't yeah. have to go to a church mm, to see that. True, yes, true. Well, so. mm, right. <laughs> but, uh, but good points there. I'm telling you. So, uh, all right. Um, more calls. Uh, just uh, bring them on four seven seven two two eight eight. This is just a nice lazy Sunday. It seems everyone's sort of in a kickback mood. Yeah, so. you know, every time I come on the TV show, everybody <laughs> agrees with us. You're so charming. I'm, not, I'm that's here. Why, yeah, it's that's why. You I'm know. here for some good intellectual head butting. I want that's people right. to call and disagree with us. Come on. <laughs> We're atheists. Oh, here's yeah. someone. Right. <laughs> As, and towards that end, we also have our viewer feedback. When we don't get call, or when we. Uh, um, Actually, the case is with pretty much all of our shows that uh, finally we end up with just more callers than we can take. And so we have TV at atheistimeandcommunity.org, which is our viewer e-feedback address, which is for you. And if you have any question that you want, if you have, you're, you're, you don't want to call, some people are nervous about calling, or if you just can't get through, which is the more common thing, uh, send us an email and ask us questions about stuff, and we will uh, we respond to all the emails, um, you know, personally, and then like the best ones... If we have a really good one, we'll bring it on the air and read it, mm-hmm. and and then uh, they'll and then we put some up on the website too. Last week was just email city. Yep. We got bombarded, and uh, which is good. We usually get a few emails during the week, but uh, right away after last week's show, yeah. uh, we really just got a flurry all at once. Yeah. Uh, a lot of guys, uh, at least a couple of view- viewers. Um, bringing up the issue of moral absolutism because that came up on the show, and that seems to be a hot button topic. Uh, we had a caller on the show last week where we pointed to uh, where we we were trying to he was trying to explain that morals are these things that are absolutes that you know they're yeah. these inviolable rules that are given to us by stealing is forever and all God, wrong God the lawgiver right and then uh, you know and and we began asking for examples and then when we started puncturing holes in this whole idea of absolutism and the inflexibility that comes with absolutism he was like uh, well no it's because this that and the other. And um, and we had one of the letter writers again didn't didn't bring the didn't get the letter print out today. I'm still trying to edit everything and see what I should put up on the website that won't go on forever. But um, one one of the letter writers gave me a very specific example of something like uh, okay, torturing small animals for fun. Can we say that that's an absolute? That's always wrong. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah, you can. But look at what you've done there. What you've done is you have defined a situation. Okay, you've you've named a victim. Okay, small animal. You've named an act, and you've named a motive. 
Okay. You have defined a specific situation. Okay. And you can do that with anything. You can you can form a reductionist argument where you take very specific situations and can you and you can say this is always wrong. Okay. You can say torture is always wrong, but yeah. you can say torturing animals yeah. is always like, wrong. But even torturing not... animals for fun. Yeah, you can say that's always wrong, but can you then extrapolate up from that and say that it's always wrong that the act of torture is an immoral act in all instances? Just like stealing. Okay, yes, you can say that stealing uh, breaking into someone's house and just stealing their belongings to sell them on eBay, that's always wrong. But again, if you're the CIA agent out and you're in, you're in deep cover and you're in a terrorist cell and you've got their plans to blow up the Brooklyn Bridge, should, is it morally wrong to steal those plans? You can't say that. So sure, you can get to moral absolutes if you want to, if you want to create a reductionist argument. Okay, and, and list various specific situations and then go, okay, now is that wrong? Sure. Is that wrong? Sure. Is that wrong? Sure. But in that case, you're not really arguing for absolutism. Well, you're arguing and, for situationalism. And, you know, on the show last week, one mm -hmm. of the things that this guy said, um, I wasn't on the mm -hmm. show, but I was watching it, mm -hmm. was uh, he said, w when you start bringing up these arguments and saying, well, but it mm -hmm. can be okay to do it in this situation, he said, oh, well, I see. You you are just an atheist so that you can make up all of your own exactly. rules and follow them. <laughs> I have two responses to that. Yeah. First of all, I know plenty of Christians that decide which rules they want to follow in the Bible and which yeah. ones they don't. Exactly. Yeah. And the second is, I mean, if you're going to be a real Christian, you're going to believe that everybody is a sinner and Jesus died for your sins. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you're not sinning, then Jesus died in vain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how can we throw away his sacrifice uh, by not committing sins? Right. Well, so. well, it just it's that when you bring up these exceptions to the inflexibility of it all, it's this one particular letter writer that we heard from. It was interesting how he tried to reframe that. He was just, it, instead of just admitting, okay, well, maybe morals aren't absolute, and instead, what you have are general guiding moral principles that apply in most cases. But every once in a while, you'll be, you'll find yourself in a situation where you you know you'll need to. It, it's the more it, it would be more moral to do the thing that would be normally not moral, um, and instead of just just saying okay, well then morals aren't absolute. They 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 try to form this argument that okay, well morals are absolute except when they're not. <laughs> it's like well, if they're either absolute or they're not. If you look up absolute and just the dictionary definition of it, it, I mean the term is very clear. It doesn't allow for any extenuating extenuating circumstances. There's no flexibility. There's no wiggle room yeah. under absolutes. But so. isn't there an always an exception to every rule? No. <laughs> Except <laughs> absolutism. But, but it isn't all about just deciding to, just, just making up your own mind what is or isn't moral. I mean, of course, there are practical things that you look at to determine what is or isn't right, and that is, you know, just look at the consequences of your actions. You know, and most people understand actions and consequences. But uh, anyway, let's see what David has to say. He's on the air. Hey, you're on the air. Hi. Hi. Um, you said that you wanted to butt in some heads today, so that's what I'm here to do. Okay. Yay. Well, thanks for calling. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I am Christian, mm -hmm. um, but I came through it kind of backwards. I was actually raised as an atheist and came to Christianity when I was about 16. Ah. Um, this, these are the kind of things that... <sighs> There's so many fun things to talk about that it's hard to find a place to start, but I'm just going to go with what you guys were just just talking about as far as uh, moral absolutism. Okay. Um, when you're talking about situationalism versus moral absolutes, you're essentially saying that <laughs> in one breath you're saying that absolutes don't exist, and then in another breath you're saying that in certain situations absolutes exist. And right there, you're contradicting yourself. No, what, like what you I was, just said, yeah. either they exist or they don't exist. So you can't say that absolutes don't exist unless you define a context. Oh, well, what so I was doing, what I was, yeah, let me let me answer you. What I was doing there was uh, responding to a letter writer uh -huh. who was trying to argue for absolutes, and he gave a situation, which was a specific situation, and said, "Can you say that these are absolutes? That this per this particular instance." This would be a situation of something that is always wrong, and therefore you do have an absolute. And, I'm, and I would say, sure, if you want to make your argument that reductionist in nature, you know, but, it, but, at the, but the fact that you are defining, you are having to define such a very specific situation in order to get to something you can call an absolute okay, but indicates that in a general sense, you, it's, it's impractical to say that absolutes are what morals are rooted in. And instead, what morals are rooted in are practical considerations and in principles that have to do with things like the consequences of actions that you perform. But I, mean, I think he's got a point. I mean, I think that even if you're giving a reductionist argument, you could still say, well, torturing animals for fun 
I mean, of course, I, I don't believe what I'm about to say, but torturing animals for fun isn't necessarily evil because some people believe that animals are just put there on the earth for, for your own pleasure. And if what you get pleasure out of is torturing them or whatever else, you know, then sure, it's it's fine to torture. Mm -hmm. It depends on your personal belief system. I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, but see, I don't think it, I don't I don't think that it does at that point. I mean, you, you know, you obviously it's. It, Ultimately, morality isn't down to the individual. I mean, it is down to what is not only what is personally what is good for you, but um, but also what is a, what you might call the greater good. And uh, sure, I mean, you can get a crazy person might be able to rationalize any sort of specific thing that they want to do, and they can either cite whatever they want to cite as their reasons for doing it and <clears> saying, "This is why I'm doing this thing." But again, but now, but now there, do you have do you have just an individual making rationalizations, or do you have a situation where that person can point to an event right there, okay, and be able to convince everyone else that he talks to that what he's doing is either oh, that is if it's like, okay, I I have this belief that animals are just here for us to you know to to be our playthings, and so based on that, I say it's okay to torture them. Now, if that person is able to convince absolutely everyone else he talks to of his argument, and he's able to successfully defend that, then does that become a moral principle that applies you know, so to everyone's society? What you're saying, though, knows. is that, that morality is a democratic process. So then if that's the case, and it's just about societal conjecture, how do you well, define not, how many people's opinion makes something right? Is because it's not about opinion. that make something right? Is it 100 people that make yeah. things something right? But it's not, because it's it not about all opinions. the Nazis that make something right? You, it's not about no opinions, it's not about, about You have to define your context. And, okay, but and I you told you the example of your listener, what? and you're saying that he's taking a specific situation, mm -hmm. a specific set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is an extreme sense, mm -hmm. but that's what argumentation is. Yeah. If you don't define the context, how can you have an argument? And so no matter how specific it is or how vague it is, there still have to be rules that, yeah. that govern what you're talking about. But the best so thing that, but the best thing that what he... to any argument. Yeah, but, but again, two, two points. First off, the, best, the only way that that letter writer was able to get to something that you could agree was an absolute... Was By to, creating an extreme. Yeah, was, was to create an extreme. And certainly there are, I, you know, I won't deny that there are extremes. But, uh, but getting back to your original uh, position, it's, it's not about simply conjecture. It's not about people simply sitting around tables saying, well, what do you think should be right and wrong today? It has to do with observable phenomena, things like actions having consequences. And you're right, it is a learning process. It is a thing that societies figure out. Okay, I mean, 50 years ago, 50 years ago, it was considered morally acceptable for the races to be segregated. Okay, a hundred years ago, it was considered morally acceptable for women to, you know, not have work outside the home and to be, you know, ruled over by their husbands and to not have careers and jobs, things like that, and to not be allowed to vote. That was that was morally acceptable a hundred years ago. A hundred and fifty years ago, we had slaves. I mean, we have societies learn lessons, and they learn lessons because when they when a certain situation or a circumstance exists, and this is considered the norm. But then the norm ends up doing more harm than good. You can actually look at that. You can see the negative consequences of those actions and say, you know what? I think we need to rethink this. And it happens all the time. It, I mean, that's just that is how civilization develops. Yeah, but, but that's, even, if that's what you're using as your determining factor for what is moral or what is amoral. Then you're essentially leaving it up to a mass and a, a mass of people that that have no. Common individual. It, it, how do you know you have no? Co if you're in a civilization, how do you have no common ground? I mean, you the do. The fact that it has changed so much throughout history that at one point slavery was considered okay, that at one point uh, women essentially being treated as property was okay, that at one point you know beasts of burdens were treated as property, and they still are. And you know you have your extreme. I don't know what you want to call them. Hippies may not be a popular word, but you have people that think any kind of. Uh, control or ownership over animals is wrong now and other people that think it's okay. If you're using societal conjecture as your standard of what is right and what is wrong, then of course there are no fundamentals, but then there's also no measure of value. You can't you, say that... What do you mean there's a... How is there no measure of value? How? Because... I mean, if there were no, if there were no measure of value, what I'm saying is that you would still have slaves. There is such a thing as right is wrong. If there were always it, open to change. See, who is saying there's no right and wrong? And it, well, obviously things do change because we don't have slavery anymore. If there were no measure of values, you, we would still have segregation. We would still have slavery. There had to have been some sort of value that people looked at, something that they could observe and say, 
I can. Here's why this is wrong, and I can see it right before my eyes. And exactly. and, and it's and, and the change learn, the change is based on learn something. Yeah. From say our mistakes. Right. And in order to learn, there have to be a set of rules that we learn from. So you have to determine what those rules are. Yeah, you got to do that the rules first. Are what we're by right there now. has to be some kind of base fundamental, something that you're learning from. Exactly. You have to compare you some mm -hmm. standard of value. Yeah, and, and what we're no learning from standard we're not, of value, then there's no such thing as value at all. And what we're learning from is what we have right now. Right now, we think that owning animals is okay. In 50 years, people might start seeing that. That's a really bad idea for whatever reasons, but and they might what? What would, that. What would lead us to think that? I don't know yet. I mean, it, it has okay. it, it has to happen. I mean, it has to. There, I think there has to be shown that there is some overriding negative that you know the 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 liabilities outweigh the benefits of a of of a particular any sort of behavior. Okay, the harm outweighs the benefit. And not not just to the individual doing the thing, and not just to the you know not just who the thing is done to, but on a but on on an overall scale, right? And that, for example, slavery and segregation. You can use those as excellent examples, right? I mean, what you had with segregation was a situation that was causing a a, a culture wide rift and a, a, an atmosphere and a culture of distrust and violence and hate that existed for no reason other than you had two different people of two different skin colors, and people finally had to look at this and say. What's this got to really do with anything, and why are we allowing this to be a factor in something that the only result is, the only positive result of keeping blacks and whites rigidly segregated under law is that we end up with things like riots and people getting lynched and people getting shot. If this is the result of having this as a moral precept, yeah, but if this shouldn't be the moral precept. About benefit versus, you know, what what is, mm -hmm. is beneficial versus what is not beneficial. Mm -hmm. What was justifying slavery at that point, at least in this country, was economic gain. We were essentially, you know, the entire economy was driven by, say, you know, cotton production, which couldn't be done mm -hmm. if we paid for the labor, you know. We, and, we eventually, was, and we eventually decided that making people work and going through all the riots and going through shootings and lynchings didn't override the economic benefit but, we were getting. But the but what I'm saying is that there's a standard there. There's a fundamental there that is is there is is what we use to say that we there have is learned a from our yeah. there, 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 there is a principle at work. Right and wrong, and there cannot be right and wrong without some kind of fundamental. But there's, there's no, but there is a standard. There is a fundamental. We have basic values. We have basic morals that we start from, and we okay, can where say. Where does it come from? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I don't know. there's well, I can well, I can tell <laughs> you what we've already learned. Well, uh, it, it, there is actually there there is evidence that we are. I mean, that first off, our species are we're genetically predisposed towards cooperative behavior. Okay, okay. so if that's our natural so, inclination, then yeah. we're either our deep our, our genetic that's not the only thing, but flawed, or there is some purpose to our life. And well, how would the gene, how, I mean, how would the genetic be flawed if it, if it leads to... Because, I mean, because you know, uh, the way I see it, I mean, if you look at situations where you have stuff like, you know, very, very serious, very obvious uncooperative behaviors going on, like warfare and things like slavery and things like uh, you terrorism, for example, what you have at work there are things like very strong ideologies at play where people are, you know, you can say brainwashed, you can say indoctrinated into specific... Either points of view or belief systems, or either political or extremist religious ideologies, that tell that essentially well, tell them it's okay to crash planes in the buildings. Ideologies. Well, they be wait, the wait. absence of religious ideologies. Well, I, you know, find me a find me a yeah. You know, I mean, it's just uh, you know, September 11th was a religious ideology. Okay, Northern I, Ireland, that's a religious ideology. You know, I mean, you know, t when you tell people you're going to go to this heaven and you're going to have 72 virgins peeling you grapes for eternity if you blow up the World Trade Center, okay, that's that's a religious ideology. You might say it's a kooky one, but it's still one all the same. What you you end, you end up with extremist ideologies. It seems to me in every incident that you can point to where people are doing massive harm to other people, you know, that's not somebody working on their natural instincts. That's somebody who has been told and who has been convinced by either an authority figure. Uh, or, or a government or some sort of uh, extremist organization that they've become affiliated with that has filled their head with these ideologies. Wait, let me say something. I believe, I believe that, that the human, I mean, the human species 
is flawed. I mean, nobody's perfect, and I think pretty much everybody across mm -hmm. all religions agree with that. That's why we morals have are basic, We have basic morals that that are, are that are very like clear cut, like killing and stealing and mm -hmm. and raping and pillaging and all this kind of stuff. And and none of them, none of them is a moral absolute because we can we can put them like you were saying. You you can't argue a fact until you put it in a context. Mm -hmm. We can agree that those morals in a specific context are, are morally absolute, but in a different context aren't morally absolute. And the point is that, I mean, where segregation came from in the first place was that our moral was equality. The moral we were starting from was that all men under God are equal. But all men meant all men. And he, and all people who were black, <laughs> people who were black, yeah. were not considered men. They were considered animals. Women were not considered men. They were considered property. And and you know, animals are not considered men. Mm. Gay people were not considered men. All these different classes were basically not considered human. Over time, as a society, as we have continually strived to improve ourselves, because we're not flawed, but but we mm. do we do always strive to improve ourselves. We have. Changed Changed the the moral context in so that um, so that we we function better as a society. I mean, there is no moral absolute, mm -hmm. but within a certain context, and that context can always be changing, can always be evolving and improving upon itself. You know, morals. Um, well, it's because we were able to look at the the situation of slavery, and we were able to look at the situation of uh, like institutionalized. You know, either gentrification, also classism, right? You used to have like the upper classes and the lower classes, and just the the more money you had meant the more deserving you were of privilege, mm -hmm. uh, cigarettes, what have you. In, in each one of these cases, the reason these things change and the reason that they're no they're no longer the guiding moral precepts today was because you were able to look at the cumulative effect that 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 as a moral precept was having upon just the welfare of society at large. You know, when you had segregation, you had race riots. We don't have segregation. We don't have race riots, unless, of course, some kooky thing like, you know, Rodney King happens, right? But for the most part, I mean, that has simmered down. You know, and now we're getting, you know, and, 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 and blacks are getting in a position of economic parity in this country. Still a long way to go. But at least you don't have this legally enforced segregation that just, that we can see the consequences of that is violence. You know? But still, that, that doesn't change the fact that you're essentially... Um, you're, you're obviously passionate about things that you believe in, mm -hmm. and you're obviously passionate about what you think is right and mm -hmm. versus what you think is wrong. The fact that this country no longer allows slavery is something that you're absolutely for because you are what you call humanists, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you believe in right and wrong, but you can't call them fundamental because there cannot be, bottom line is there, there can be no such thing as fundamental, uh, especially well, I think well, that there are there without some form of God, without some form how how of okay. Explain intent. to me. Explain to me how original intent. Uh, well, how how is it that okay? It, let's let's just take that for example. Let's examine that. Okay, God as the source of morals. Okay. Okay. Where does God get his morals from? Well, he's God. He creates them. So that he just made them up. Why not? He's well, God. so then how are they? Whatever he how, says goes. So how is it any less arbitrary than morals that I would make up? <laughs> God is the father of everything. Well, I don't know. Well, I he created I, life, I, but created the rules that govern life, and not only created the rules that govern life, but the rules that govern social interactions. Okay, so, okay. so but the father so, of everything, he I made the puzzle, so he knows how it fits together. Okay, you, let, on the let, other hand, let's assume, are one of the puzzle pieces. Let's assume that that's so how true. How could you have enough perspective to know right from wrong in regard to all the puzzle pieces when all you can see is your own piece? Okay, well, first off, let me. Let, I'll. I'll um, let's. Let's let's assume for the sake of argument that that's been proved. Okay, let's say okay. that there's a God, and like we know that there is one. Okay, but again, where where is his perspective? Where does his perspective come from? I mean, my perspective comes from my day to day experience. It comes from interacting with other human beings. Right. It well, comes from being it, born it, into a yeah, culture yeah. and into a civilization in which there are you know people don't live in a vacuum. Okay, I mean you live you you live and you work within a, a civilization and within a culture that is comprised of other people like yourself, who are just trying to get along. Right. That, okay? That so that's my context. So I have a context. Now, God's God is the context, only God. The right? only way for God's context to work would be if he was what he claimed to be, and that is omniscient, as in everything. He is the definition well, of infinity. Well, uh, okay, but again, see, you're just you're positing this unproven being as, as the source for all of this. But again, how how is well, a God deciding? What, what would you 
How is a God just deciding what is morals? How is a God just deciding what is morals any better than just, say, uh, uh, if, if we had a king instead of an elected president, and that king just came out and said, I'm above all of you because I'm the king. Okay, the okay I am in a higher plane than you are because I'm king. I am going to decide what these morals are. The difference They're just is arbitrary. The king is one of the creations. We're talking about the difference between an infinite being deciding the difference between right and wrong. There's and no, no, there is not a shred of evidence that there is an infinite being, so why should I make that Tell the basis for my morals? Uh, any, anything at all, this being is supposed to be all-powerful, should have no trouble making his existence unambiguously clear to me. And uh, I'm in a, you know, an infinite being. Just Okay. Here, here's, the, here's the different spin on it. Okay. okay. Let's say we find new documents tomorrow buried mm -hmm. out in the desert in Egypt somewhere. It's a new little, you know, section. Oops, we missed this part of the Bible. And it says, you know, God has determined that rape is now cool. It's a good thing to do. It, it has certain benefits to society. That's something that we should reinstitute and we should have again. They came out and they add that into the middle of John or something like that. Would you support it? God has just handed well, down a document that, that says rape is good. Well, let's say the document's forged. I mean, you could, you, that could easily be, I mean... Well, that completely changes the argument. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. Uh, let's say it's not forged. Let's say that let's God... Let's say it's actually true. Let's say no. it's actually written by God. He comes up with his argument. <laughs> it's, it's, and it's it says... Kind of if, God, if God's hand came down right now and said, rape is good, yeah. written out in <laughs> big letters in the desert, would that then be good? First of all, this is a weighted question for two reasons. Yeah, I mean, it we're, is. We're, I mean, that, that is a loaded question. Our reaction to that yeah. on what we currently think is right and wrong. Yeah. So obviously, right now, if someone came to me and said that, <laughs> you know, there's a new book that was admitted yeah. by the Catholics that says that rape, yeah. Yeah. rape is good, yeah. of course my initial reaction would be, that's blasphemous. Yeah. But yeah. if, on the other hand, that was part of the original design, then our view of morality would be different, obviously, yeah. because it's... It's inconsistent with what we currently consider good. Yeah. But, I mean, okay. if you but, tell but, but yeah. one at a time, people. Mm -hmm. But to continue on with this, the current book that we have has a lot of moral things in here and, and things that really don't sound that good. Kids that don't respect their parents should be stoned to death. Now, typically Christians say, well, that's part of the Old Testament. It doesn't really apply anymore, so we can ignore that. But thou shalt not steal, kill, rape, the, blah, the, blah, blah. Old that's good stuff. Now, they're just picking and saying, well, the stuff that's on this page is better than the stuff that's on this page. They're making it up. Okay. There are plenty well, of situations. First of all, mm -hmm. I don't, I am a Christian, but I yeah. don't know the Bible well enough to be able to hold that right. argument. Okay. What I will say is that there is a big difference between uh, Judaism, and what I mean by that is the first five books of sure. the Bible, Jews, you know, the Israelites, whatever you want to call it, and Christianity, in that the, the first five books of the Bible were written pre-Christ. Mm -hmm. So judgment had to be carried out on earth. There was no afterlife. There was no redemption. There was no judgment day, so to speak. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, post-New Testament, after Christ has died, there, we are forgiven by such a thing as grace. Yeah. And so the treatment of sin is completely different. Right. So although, you know, stoning is something that was acceptable in the Old Testament, it's not something yeah. that's acceptable now because we no longer have yeah. the right... But let me take this... Let me but pair, the Ten Commandments are Old Testament. Let me, let me pare this down to just something that's much... Very simple because there's we have other callers on the line. I'd like to go okay. ahead and get to them. And there's a very there's actually a much simpler way to resolve this whole thing because of course you can you can speculate back and forth about what if God says this would that be okay? I mean, Save us, Martin. Yeah, I mean that's a uh, that's you're, I mean in a sense he's, uh, I mean da uh, David is right. That is kind of a loaded question. I mean you know, but here's here's the point. Um, uh, two points actually. First off, for me, right. In, in the absence of any evidence that there is any sort of all-powerful, eternal, universal lawgiver out there handing down laws, I can only use my own experiences as well as the lessons that I've learned as a human being growing up in a civilization, the particular civilization that I live in, in order to learn what moral principles are based upon practical considerations. I have, I have no other frame of reference. Okay, I, now, agree. But, I but, totally but, agree with that. Now, here's, here's the thing, though. If there were, okay, this all-powerful lawgiver, I would then have to question the whole idea of, well, how do you get morals simply by following a list of rules? Those, that list of rules, I mean, if God were just to, to come down and say, all right, this, that, and the other thing are, are things that are moral, and this, that, and the other thing are not, I would still have to understand why those things were what they were. God, just like a person, would have to have reasons why stuff like murder, stealing, rape, you know, arson, what have you, 
is wrong, just like you know, God would have to be able to explain and, uh, and give us an understanding of why those were wrong things, just, like, just in the same way a person coming up with moral precepts would have to do it through acquiring an understanding of why those particular actions were wrong. You'd have to have understanding whether it's coming from a God or just coming from another person. So, so understanding would, it, it's not just, well, God says it because he's all-powerful and he knows everything and he makes the rules because he's omniscient. Well, fine. If he's omniscient, that's, then he sh he'll still need to explain. God being omniscient and being the omniscient lawgiver doesn't absolve him of, of having to explain or, or at least being able to form an explanation. And if the explanation is there, that means it's independent of God. And so it would be but a moral you yourself, precept. Hold on. You yourself can't posit explanations, for instance, why you feel that murder is always wrong. Of course why I do. you feel that yeah. stealing is always wrong. What do you mean I can't? Can. Absolutely we can. Yeah, of course you can. Okay. Again, not the always I part, but... I can, because if I live in a world where murder is okay, then I'm at risk of being murdered, and everybody I love is at risk of being murdered. So we cannot... And I don't like the way that feels. It makes me sad. And, and, if, everybody, and if everybody's at risk of being, of being murdered, how do you have a civilization? Exactly. How do you I mean, have a civilization? If everybody were doing that, we'd all be dead. But if you sit down and you create a law that says right. that murder is wrong, yeah. the problem is that a lot of the... A lot of these basic premises that are in the Bible that are supposedly written by God would work if everybody followed them, but God didn't make allowances for what happens if other people break these. I mean, if it's like it's like as Martin was saying, you know, is is murder wrong if I'm in a situation of self-defense? Like if I have to, if someone is trying to kill me mm -hmm. and I have to defend myself, is it okay for me to kill him? Okay, well, hold on. Now, first of all, the, yeah, this, this is going to be by the Bible. As far as murder, mm -hmm. killing and murder are not the same thing. Well, murder uh, implies intent. What? <laughs> right. But, but what, what makes them not the same thing? Intent. Oh, uh, what? Murder well, is something that's malicious. Killing uh, could be saving your life. Killing could be... Well, saving your life is still intent. I someone's, still intend that other person to be yeah. dead. Someone's, someone's trying to kill me, so it's self-defense? Yeah, I mean, there's your intent. intent is, is, is defensive. It's not aggressive in that I want to kill someone simply for the satisfaction of knowing that I'm stronger than him. Yeah, but so again, again, you're defining a situation in which killing becomes, uh, you know, a bad thing because no, the more no, no. I'm you using think... a situation to explain my... exactly, the you're best using way you're how using the human your... psyche works, but you're using a situation. I don't That's... think okay, okay, so you I... tell me. Hang on. you tell me how murder is wrong without using a situation. You can't. Well, because it's situational. Point. Because it's... murder is not. Hang on, hang on. Having me... someone lose on. their life is not 100 percent always in a... always wrong. Again, war, self-defense. In most cases, I can say that society works out better if we don't kill each other. But I can think of cer certain situations where but, it would but be. There, but they're extremist examples. Of are course, they not? Of they course. Are situa in, in, in most people will go their entire lives. Right? Exactly. The, the overwhelming majority of people will live their entire lives never encountering a situation in which they'll have to make that decision. Exactly. I must kill to defend myself. Oh no, we're at war now and I'm drafted and I must kill to uh, defend yeah. myself and my platoon yeah. and my country. Most people these days aren't going to find themselves in that situation. Yeah. So for most people, you're right. There's a general moral principle that you can just look at and say, this is going to work because that's just how you get the most peace yeah. and satisfaction. Mm -hmm. The um, greatest good for the greatest but number. I'm going to... but. But it, but it's a very interesting thing to talk about, and so I'm just going to sign off, uh, and let's get to our next caller, so I'm just asking you one final question. Okay. And let's just say that, t t this is purely hypothetical. Okay. Let's just say that tomorrow, or this week, or something, uh, something occurred personally in, to you that caused you to relinquish your belief in God. Okay? okay. Not saying it would ever happen, but let's just say that something would... Does, just something would happen that would cause you to think, you know, I don't think I believe this stuff anymore. Okay. I, what do you do? You use the faculties that are natural to determine the difference. Exactly. But, and that's what we're talking about. The, the, if, if going from the Christian perspective, one thing that the Bible does say mm -hmm. is that our conscience, you know, God's word is written on our heart, something that we know intrinsically. It's no. something that every man, whether you're Christian or not, we know the difference between right and wrong. You don't have to be a Christian to live a moral life. Mm -hmm. It's but, something but again, that's written but, on our heart. But, but, but that is biblical. That, that doesn't say that if, if I suddenly mm -hmm. had some kind of experience that caused me to lose my faith, first of all, if there is such a thing as truth, and I'm talking truth with a capital T, mm -hmm. there is such a thing as truth, whether or not I believe that it was true would have no bearing on whether or not it was true. But again, from a practical standpoint, if you're a person who has never heard of God, and who has never been introduced to this, uh -huh. you know. And again, what do you do? You know, what do you do? I mean, your choice. 
And, you know, to say that, oh, well, if I stopped believing in God, that wouldn't mean that, you know, God's will wasn't still written on my heart. Well, then where does free will come from? Okay. I mean, and if, if morals came from God or if morals came from people, there would still have to be reasons why those things were morals. Okay. Yeah, so, my, my, so, I mean, it's just, it's all not necessary. Everything we've talked about is still that you guys are asserting moral fundamentals without calling them fundamentals. There's some kind of a... If well, I'm calling them principles. The reason, even though I don't believe in God and I don't mm -hmm. believe in Christianity, the reason that murder is bad is because... I don't like. I wouldn't like it if if my mom or my mother, people that are close exactly. to me, died. Like, why wouldn't you like it? Because that's I love them. Well, why is that a value as opposed to something that you consider wrong? You got to reduce it all the way to the baseline. Bottom line, yeah, you you have to have ex that you, you have to have explanations for why things are the way they are, yeah. and you would have to have those whether a god came up with morals or not. So, lacking any evidence for this eternal, uh, all-powerful God. It is simply more practical to say morals are a learning principle that that we develop and that we can over time. We're anyway, we're out of we're out of, we got to get on with some next callers. We're like five minutes into to the end of the show, so thanks all the same. All right. Uh, the I, one the one last thing that we, we have, have that I want to throw out here. Okay. Is that we seem to be coming from two different standpoints. We realize that, or it is our idea that we have come that. Humans are a social species. Mm -hmm. We have gotten this way over millions of years of living together, mm -hmm. and we have just, you know, we come to realize that killing each other kind of sucks. Um, he is under the opinion that God created us mm -hmm. and put that in us. Yeah, there's a, different, there's a different paradigm. Yeah, we or, learned it. Yeah. He just said, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's so. a different there's a different paradigm at way. Yeah. I mean, you're right. We're we're arguing across board because so. he he's arguing from this is the source exactly. And even if you didn't believe, it would still be the source exactly. Okay, but the point is right that even if God were the source, God would still have to understand why, or at yeah. least have to have a be able to come up with or explain and articulate a reason as to why these moral precepts and not others. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it, it's it's either God just making stuff up. In which case, he could have easily said, thou shalt kill, as, as he did, thou yeah. shalt not kill. Yeah. Or, he had to have a good reason for saying, thou shalt not kill. Yeah. Thou shalt not kill had to have had some substance behind it to make that the moral precept, rather than, thou shalt kill. Yeah. In which okay. case, reason and logic win, and, those, and so well, we. And the reasons would be gleaned from what? They would be gleaned from an understanding of the consequences of that action. Yeah. And a thinking person can can understand that without any, you know, recourse to some sort of yeah. lawgiver. You know? yeah. um, and again, I mean, just, you know, cooperative behavior is better than destructive behavior. You can prove that, you can demonstrate it, and, yeah. I, you know, and it's in our genes. You yeah. Know? Yeah. A couple of very interesting books. There's um, one that I've just started reading. It's called The Origins of Virtue uh, by Matt Ridley. And then he's come up with another book, uh, the, a really new one. It's called Nature via Nurture, where he's yeah. also explaining. Yeah. This is brand new. I haven't read that one yet. And there's another one that I'm uh, that I'm really interested in reading called Unto Others, where it looks at uh, examples of moral behaviors in other species in the animal kingdom. Okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Not just yeah. chimps. Don't, you know what have you? These. You know there are other social. You know, and, and see, it does seem to be that morals are a byproduct of being a social species. Oh, yeah, you know? definitely. I mean, you could be like, uh, you know, sharks, right? They're not social. I mean, they're, you know, yeah. they, they go it alone. Mm -hmm. And so in that regard, you don't have, you know, the necessity doesn't yeah. come up where they have to develop these There's practical no rules. social structure to them. Practical rules to get along. Yeah. Well, yeah. because the, the need is not there. Yeah, exactly. So morals arise when you have a need to get along yeah. with people. Because yeah. even if you had total moral anarchy, right, you know, we're all walking around doing you know, whatever, Eventually, there would become a situation where, like, I encounter Karen, and Karen has, you know, a big uh, bag of peanuts, you know, and, it's, and we have to figure out, all right, you know, if I want some of those peanuts, we can do this one of two ways. Like, I can kill <laughs> Karen for the peanuts, or we can work out a way to share the peanuts, or I can buy the peanuts off of Karen, you know, or Karen can kill me to make sure I don't touch her damn peanuts, you know. <laughs> One of those things, you would have to figure that out, and eventually you would probably come up with a comedy. Want a peanut? I mean, it's just, what is the easier, more practical, and better for everyone to get along with? Neater, less messy. Yeah. 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 So just, you just, but if he kills natural. Karen, she's not going to be around tomorrow. Two with more reactions more to that. I mean, he, he tried to make a, David tried to make a distinction between killing and murdering. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the Ten Commandments actually say, say thou shalt not kill. It depends on the murder. translation. It, says, thou thou shalt translation. Not kill. Yeah. It, it, it also doesn't say, and that is, 
is the point I always have to make. Mm. Thou shalt not kill other people. It just says thou shalt not kill. So what the oh. heck are y'all doing <laughs> eating well, meat? Right. Uh, <laughs> I had to get it in there. Good one. Anyway, look, it's Sorry. obviously it's a very in-depth and complex uh, position. Um, I'm just arguing that there's no, you know, you just don't need the recourse to some sort of divine lawgiver. And in fact, it muddies the waters because... Yeah. You know, even a divine lawgiver would have to be able to explain the laws and understand why it's these laws and not other laws. And people can do that themselves. Ultimately, it's all about everyone wants to be happy and get along, doesn't it? Vern and Chris, I'm sorry. Uh, we had a, such a great conversation with David that we didn't get around to you. But don't forget TV at atheist-community.org. That is your viewer email address. And uh, give us your feedback. Uh, write us back on you know just whatever you, is on your mind. Okay. Call back in next week. And we'll be here next week. Uh, we're here at uh, 4:30 every Sunday. Reruns Tuesday afternoons 4:30 on this channel. Uh, and that's about it. Th Karen, thanks for being on the show. Thank you Great for having me. Great to have you always. Yes. yes. Uh, we'll do it more often. Theists. We, we don't hate you. you. We, we just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong. Bye bye.